Welcome back. In this video, we will look at named and positional arguments in functions and also required and default values. Now you'll see that I'm using the exact same function that we defined in the previous video. And also just make sure that you are on null safety is actually switched on there at the bottom. Or if you're using Visual Studio Code, then uh, this should also work exactly the same way so that we make sure we are still looking at our null safety features also. Now let's see if we call this method again, print customer discount. And I'm going to pass in a name there, let's say Peter. And I'm going to pass in an age, let's say 20. And if we run this, it will tell us that we will get no discount because we are 20 years of age. If it's uh, 70 years of age, we will get the most discount of 80. Right, so let's see uh, some other ways of also doing this. And the main thing I want to show you here is that I cannot switch around these values. So let's say I place the integer first there, the age first, and then the string name second. It won't allow me to do that. So I'm just going to go back to that. But we can use named arguments instead of positional arguments. So these are positional arguments, which means name must be in the first position and age must be in the second position. They are positional. But I can make them named so that it doesn't matter in which sequence I place them. And this is especially helpful if you've got a very long function that takes in a lot of different values. So we can do the following. You can just put a curly bracket around them and that makes them named arguments. But now you'll get an error at the top there because you need to go and indicate name with a colon and a space. And then for that one, age with a colon and a space. So the error at the top is now gone. Now the main thing with these named arguments is that I do not actually need to pass in a specific one. So I can leave out the age totally and it will not give me an error at the top. Okay, We'll fix these errors now. And these errors come now also because what of what I did now. I left out the age now which means what will be passed into this age? Actually a null value. And this is null safety that's giving me the error on these two. So let's just go back. We'll keep the age there. So even though we are sending through a specific value for the name and sending through a specific value for the age, it tells us the parameter age can't have a value of null because of its type, but the implicit default value is not. So because we are using the age in here, it cannot be null and we must make provision for it. So this is another part of null safety again inside of functions on how Dart helps us to make sure that we get safe code. So there's two ways of fixing this. We can either make these two values required, which means that the user must enter or the programmer must enter them, or we could give them default values. So let's start with the first one. So right in front of the declaration of string name, I will just type required. And in front of the int there, I will also type required. Now this makes sure that we actually provide a value at the top and we cannot leave out that value. So if I do this, if I take away the age there, it's going to tell me, uh, uh the age is required. So you can see there, the parameter age is required, but there's no corresponding argument. So if I go back and I add the age again, then no problem. So by adding required here, we are making sure that we do not have a null value there, but there's actually a value coming in. So what is the nice thing about these positional arguments is I can take that one out and put it right in the front there. I don't need to have it in a specific position and it will still work. So I can have the age first and the name second and it will still work 100%. Right, so we said we can use the required keyword here, but I can also take away the required keyword there and make this age a default value. So let's say the default value of the age will be 20. So if I do not provide an age there, then the age will automatically be set to 20. So let's run this one quickly and you can see the age is 70. So we should get an 80 Rand discount. So you can see it still works. But as soon as I leave out the age there totally, it's not required because of the required keyword not being there in front of the age. It's not required. So if I run it now, I'm giving it a default value. And that default value of 20 will be the else part there 
and you will get no discount. All right, and then the, the last one that we can also do here is to declare this as a nullable type, the age, and then we can force this age to be calculated by adding the exclamation mark there. And you can see this one actually says it's not needed because if that one is, is, uh, is working fine, um, then this one will also. So we can actually force this to work with null values. But if we do it now and I run this, you'll see we're going to get an error there because I'm trying to use an age that I didn't pass in and I did not give it a default value. But if I give, if I provide the age here, let's say 10, then it will work. So again, you can see that in most cases, it's just better to handle these null values instead of trying to force something uh, to work. So I would rather than give it a default value or make it required. So another thing that we can also do is to have one or two or three positional arguments and then have some named arguments. So we could, for example, have string staff number as a positional argument and then in curly brackets the named arguments but now the main thing is the positional arguments must always be there and that's why also you won't get a null problem here because you have to provide your positional arguments so i can have there as the first argument there i can have let's say the staff number is one one two three four and now I can see everything is 100% fine. And even if I print it out there at the bottom, I can print out that staff number. You'll see no problems. It will print out the staff number. Right, so these are just some uh, differences between your named arguments as well as your positional arguments. So you can have one function with only positional arguments or only named arguments, or you can have them combined with using positional as well as named arguments. But just remember that if you're using named arguments, you must either use required or initialize it with a specific value. And the order in which you place the named arguments does not matter at all. I hope you've enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.